Welcome to MacroCode. If you're new to this channel, consider subscribing. So today we are going to create a complete crude operation in .NET 9, and we are actually going to create a simple SP.NET Core web application. So to begin with, we are going to actually create a new project. Then we are actually able to search SP.NET web templates, MVC. So we are actually going to use this. So this is the one that we are actually going. So let me just check. So we have two. So you can see we have this one for F sharp and actually we have this one for C sharp. So I'll just uh, pick that one. Then if I proceed, I can actually choose the directory where I want to place my project. So you can actually choose that. So for me, I'll just uh, place there. Then I'm going to call this project of mine customer, customer management. So my project will be customer management system. Then I just say place my solution and project in the same directory or you can actually untick it. So for me, I'll just place it. Then I'll actually choose .NET 9, which is actually in preview. Then on the authentication type, I can actually choose individual accounts. Then configure for HTTPS, I leave that one then I can actually say create my project. So this will create our simple crude application and we're actually going to connect this to the database. So if you're new to this channel and you have not subscribed, please consider subscribing. We noticed 90% of you guys are watching our videos and you haven't uh, subscribed. So this is our project. So as you can see, the folders are actually the same. We have the program.cs class. We have the app settings where we are, will be configuring our database. Then you have the areas folder. We also have the controllers and we have the properties. So before doing anything, I want us first to confirm the NuGet packages that we have. So you can see we have the NuGet for SQL Server. We have the tools, Identity UI, uh, Entity Framework Core, and also we have the, the Diagnostic uh, Entity Framework Core. So for that one, I want us now to first create our database. So here we are going to call our database customer management customer customers or we call it customer management just call our database customer management so this is our customer management then if we create that then you are going to copy this name our customer management database then go to our app settings so on our app settings we are going to replace the database with our our database name then the server name, you can actually click here, connect. Then you can copy the server name of your, uh, your server name. But also you can connect to the, to the remote server using an IP and a port. So you can actually do that. So for me, I'll just do that. Then here you see we have the trusted uh, connection. We have the trust, uh, that is the multiple active result sets has been set to true. So what I need to do, I want us to add one thing here. So I want to say here, trust server certificate. So you can say trust uh, server certificate. And you can actually have this to true. So this you can say trust to be capital. Trust server certificate is true. Then if you go to our program.cs, so we need to actually ensure that we have this, our, our entity framework core. So let's just confirm our new gets. So if we do that, we are going to install our entity framework core. So let's just confirm. So if you do that, then we can actually, we need actually to install that. So let's just install. So if you're new to this channel and you're watching our videos and you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing, like the video and you can actually share. So we'll also be providing the source code. So in case you need the source code, you can also claim the source code down below. And that will go a long way in ensuring that you support our work. So we are installing some of the NuGet packages. So sorry, I think we are installing the wrong one. Yes. So let me just uh, let me just stop this. You want us to do here NuGet package. So you'll, you'll notice we actually need these particular versions, which is not there. So for now, so if we just go to our program.cs class, so let me zoom in so that you are able to see. We have our connection string and we are actually using SQL Server. Then we have our 
authorization, we have all this. Then we have our app settings already defined. So what I want us to do, I want us to do my to add migration. So let's just go to NuGet Package Manager Console. Then here, I want us to add migration. So let's just say add migration. Then we can say initial migration. So that is the name of our migration. So if you press enter, then our migration, a folder will be created on this particular end uh, called migrations. And we will actually have a file name with our, uh, in the name that is just provided. So we'll have a class with the name that is uh, that, that we just provided. So you can see this is our initial migration. We have not added anything. So we can actually update our database. So that's one way of how you can do that. So let's just update the database. And it will actually create all the uh, SPNet identity tables on our database. So you can see these commands are being run. They're actually creating some of the tables on our database. So if you go to our database, you realize that we'll have some tables already created. So you can see we have these tables. We have EF migration history. We have SPNet user token, SPNet users, SPNet user roles, SPNet user logins user claims and SPNet roles. So we have actually done a video about explaining what the role of these uh, tables. So if you want to see, you can actually look for that particular video. So if we launch our app, we can actually create a user and we can register a user in our application. So let's just launch our app without doing anything. So if you launch our app, you realize that we have this particular uh, register and uh, login. So I'll just register. And I can actually provide my credentials here. So I just provide my credentials and I can register. So if I click register, so the passwords are not matching. So I'll just register for now. Then I'll also register. So if I, I click register, then the user will be created and you'll realize that in case we wanted to confirm the user email we'll actually we can actually configure our application to send a email notification but for now it is actually giving us a link so if you click link here you'll be able to kind of confirm a password um, manually so if you go back to our spnet users you realize that there is a user that has been created so we have the user that has been created here and we also have the password which is actually hashed. So if you go back to our app, we can actually log in with our credentials. So these are the credentials and I can click here login and you'll realize that we now have the hello macro code at the top. So that means we are actually authenticated. So the first thing that I want us to do is actually, I want us to create some uh, uh, models. So I want us to use what we call code first approach. We are creating our model which will actually be translated later to a table. So let's create a model called a uh, customer. So this customer of ours, I want us to have first. So let me just zoom in so that we are able to see. So I want us to have a public uh, int ID. So this will be our primary key. Then we also have, uh, so we, we need to have customer name. So here we do string, then you can say name. Then you can also do here a string. Then you can do email address, email address. Then you can also do here string. Then you can do here phone number, phone number. So you can actually do here int. Let's just do int, phone number. We can also do uh, here, what uh, other thing? We can also say address. And we can also do, so that is our customer. So what other thing can we, so let's see, we can do city, we can do region, we can do here postal code, we can do country, we can also do, uh, let's just use, use the phone number here. So let's just use the string. Then we can also do, so this is, a. Uh, uh, we can do fax can also do fax number, can do here. So let's just do up to here. So we have this. So fax, fax number, and we have uh, those particular 
Then we can add actually now on our user, on our customers here, we can actually add a public a string, we can actually add public date time, then we say created, created on, created on. So this will be, so we have our created on, so this will actually take the time when the customer will be created. So we now have our customer. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to create now our, we need to actually have on our application DB context, you realize that we need to have that uh, set here. So we can actually do DB public. So we need to actually define it here, DB set. Then we pass the model, which is the customer, customer. And here we can actually now pass the customers this will be the name of our table. So once we have that here, we can actually add migration. And this one will actually generate now the SQL commands that will need to be created on our database. So if we just add uh, migration, then we can call these uh, customers, customer. Uh, so you can say added customer, added customer. So it will actually generate now the migration file. So as you can see on our migration file, it is actually giving this name of the uh, migration file. Then you can see it is actually telling us create table customers. We have the columns, which is the ID. We have the name, the address, the, the city, region, postal code, country, phone number, fax, and created on. So if you go to the database, you realize that we don't have that particular table. So if you search on the, on the tables, we don't have that particular table. So the only thing that needs to be done now is we need to go to our application. So on the, on the NuGet package manager console, then just do update database. So if you do update database, our database will be updated and we'll have our new table. So if you go to the database now, you'll get the table called uh, customers. So this is the table called customers and we have the ID name address, city, region, postal code, country, phone number, fax, and uh, created on. So the next thing is now, the, we need to create the forms to actually create, to actually add the customers. So there is a simple way to that. So you can actually create, you can actually come to our controllers, then add new, then new scaffolded item. Then you can actually scaffold now, and this will create all the forms that you need. So use MVC controller with views using entry framework core, then click add. Then on the model, choose the model that is the customer. On the DB context, choose our application DB context. Then you'll see that the controller name has been uh, assigned. So just click add and actually it will generate the code for us. So it will generate the create, the delete, the edit and the uh, view. So our work will now be styling and actually mapping all those details to ensure that we have everything already set. So let's just wait as our code is generating. So this code will generate and we'll have the controllers, the views, all the views for crude operation. So let's just wait and see. So our code is generating. So as you can see, it is now building the project. So let's just wait. So for those who are new to this channel and you have not subscribed, please consider subscribing, like our video, and you can also share so that you help us reach more of the audience. So you can see our code has been generated and we have actually our controllers here. So we have all these actions. So you can actually see the actions here. So you have the create, create, uh, the get, the post, uh, you can check the customer if it exists, uh, de delete the customer, and you can actually edit and view the details. So if you come to the views down here, you realize that you have a folder called customers. And if you open it, we have the various uh, actions, uh, create, delete, uh, details, edit, and index. So if you go to the, if you go to the share, shared layout, then you can actually add now our customer to the to be part of the links. So I'll just come here. Then I can say our controller now will be customers, customers, and it will actually take us to index. 
and we can call these customers. So we can now be able to access our customers via the link. So let's just launch our app and see if we can access the customers via the link. So we realize that we now have the customers here. If you click on it, you'll see we have now these particular details. So I can say create, and you can see here, I can say the customer name is a macro code, email is a macro code, macro code at gmail.com so gmail.com then we have our address we can say this is our address this is nairobi you can say region is uh, nairobi then we can actually have our phone number then uh, fax then the, the date it was created so we, this actually needs to be added automatically so i'll show you how we can do that but for now if we click click create you realize that our data has been added automatically without us and if you go to the table and just refresh you realize that you have our data macro code and all these information so what i want us to do is if you go to the create form we realize that we have the created on. So I want us to remove it here. So delete it and go to our controller. So our customer's controller on the create action here. Then we just do here, remove the bindings here. Remove the bindings and you can actually do here, uh, customer.created on. So you can do here, customer.created on. You can actually do date time, then you can actually say dot now. So it will that will be assigned to our custom. So let's just go back to our form. So here I want us to arrange these so I, we can do this uh, 12 and I want us to arrange these into rows. So I can do div class. So I can do div class class, then I can do a row. Then I need to close this. I want this to be into two columns instead of having one long list. So I want us to do that. So how do we do that now? So I want us to do here, we can do call MD6. So if we do that, I can add that here, I can add that class here, I can add that uh, there, I can also add it here, I can also add it here. I can also add it here, add that there, I can also add it there, and uh, I can also add it this one. And here I can actually do PT3. So I want to have this uh, pushed down a bit. Then I can format. So if we relaunch our app, so let's relaunch our app and see how now our form looks like. So this is a simple crude app, so we will just do uh, customers. So if I click create, you see how our form now looks like? So this is how our form now looks like. So you can also do here, we say here, you uh, can say here, uh, Microsoft, Microsoft, that I can say at Gmail, that is our email. So let's just do that, our address, city, then we can have, then if we click create, we can see our customers is uh, being created here. So we now have our form looking a bit better. Then we can also remove the, instead of saying we have, we can say here create, create customer, then we can remove this. Then we, we update, we realize that now we have create customer. So if you go back to the list, we can now improve this particular form here. So if we go to the index, just go to the index, then here I want us to say customers list. Then you can say add new custom. So that is our, our button. So then I want us to improve our table. So here I want us to do table uh, data so you can say table then we can actually say bordered you can say table 
can do active, you can say table, then you can say here hoover, you can actually check, you can say table, which are the property, then you can say responsive. So that will have our table kind of uh, looking better. So let's just uh, relaunch our app and see how that will look. So you can actually add these prop uh, classes here. So if you go to customers, see how our table looks like. So we can actually remove one of the property called active, this one. Then if I update our app, you can see this how it looks. So we have now the name, uh, email here, and this is how our table now looks like. So you can see this one looks like a, a link. So we can actually uh, have uh, something like a button instead of making it look like a link. So how do we do that? So we can add a class here. You can say class, you can do btn, btn, you can say primary. So that is our button. So if we update it, then we'll have, you can see, it now looks like a button. Even at these ones. So we can actually have them as buttons. So I'll just do here class. You can do BTN, BTN. Then we can do this is a primary. Then you can also have here class. You can do BTN, BTN, BTN. You can say warning. And then you can have a class here. I say BTN, BTN. Then you can do danger. So if we update our app, we'll now be having these as buttons. You see, it looks now like buttons. So you can actually even separate these ones into separate actions and even on the separate uh, columns. So how can we do that? So just go back here. We can say this is a view. We add new uh, table headers. You can also add uh, edit. And you can also add here delete. So then you can separate this into three. So you can separate that one. So here we can have, uh, so the first one is view. So you can call this view and you can uh, remove this one. You can also remove this one. Then you can say edit. Uh, that is it. Then you can have now delete. And that is our, so let's uh, relaunch our app. So we'll now be having two, we'll now be having two, three buttons with a separate, so you can see we have the customers list. So you can add a new customer. So you can just say here, James uh, Mwangi, Mwangi. Then we can do, so that is some of the details. So if you create, can see you can add as many customers as we can so let's just do that so can add another one can add so i'm just adding random numbers so this is nairobi so we've actually managed to create a simple crude app in sp.net co and we have done this in dotnet 9 so if you like how this video has, uh, has evolved, you can actually uh, subscribe, like the video, and comment down below. So you can see how our application now looks. So assuming you want to do a view, so you see, you can actually view the details of the customer, and you can actually change even the, the look and feel. So if you go to details, so you can actually change this to uh, buttons, you can say this is a class, then you say btn, btn, uh, primary, then back to list, we can have a class, you can say this is btn, btn, you can do warning, then, so that is our, then here you can say customer details, you can do your customer details, then you remove this one. So if you update, this is how our application now looks. So you can see the customer details. If you go back to the list, then you're able to, then we have the update. So you can see the update uh, screen. It looks like uh, the initial uh, uh, 
form. So you can actually mod, uh, also alter that. So for the edit, we can do the same thing we did for the create. You can do here, then you can do div class. You can do here row. Then I can actually close this here. Then I can I can actually now divide this into two columns. So I'll do column md six. Then I can copy this particular class here to here. I can duplicate it now across my fields. Then I'll have them into columns. So that is it. That is it. Also add it here. Can also add it here. Can also add it here. But I'll I'll remove also the created on. Then I'll show you how we can do that. So here, instead of doing that, then I can remove. I can say this is update customer. Then I can remove this particular field. So if we relaunch our app now, we realize now like the the edit form so let's just do this as a p sorry i wanted to do pt3 so let's just relaunch so we notice 90 percent of you guys are watching our videos and you haven't subscribed please consider subscribing like the video and comment down below so you can see if we do edit you realize that the form now looks the same as create form and it has a pre-filled details but now we have we don't have the create created on. Assuming we are updating a customer, we can actually be tracking the details of uh, when the customer was updated. So and that now takes us to another thing. Assuming we missed a column in our customers table and we need to introduce it. So how do we do that? So we can actually introduce another field here. So you can just do public date time. Then you can say modify more modified on then you can say here get set but because this is something that uh, is nullable we can actually add that so and uh, then we go to our new get package manager console you can actually do that here new get package manager console then uh, clear that here then you can actually add migration and you can say uh, updated uh, customer modified modified on so then add migration so our migration file will be generated and you can see the only column that is being added is modified on and then we can update our database update uh, so we can do update database then press enter then our database will be updated with the new column so if you go back to our database and we just do select, you realize that there is a column that is now null called modified on. Now that column, we will only be updating that column when we are updating the customer. So, and that will take us now to the edit action. So let's just remove this. So on the edit action, we need actually to have our, so you can say customer dot modified on then we do date time then dot now so that is when the customer was modified so let's just relaunch uh, the application and modify one of the customers so i'll just go to customers then if i do edit then i can say here this is updated so let's just call macro code updated and if we press that, you'll see this is macro code updated. So you can realize that when, when we are updating the details, we have our modified on actually being added. So that is a simple way of actually creating a crude app on our application. So you can actually delete some of the details. So you can see here. So if you click delete, then our, our data will be deleted. So that is a simple way on how you can create a simple crude application in .NET 9. So if you're new to this channel and you've liked the video, subscribe, I like the channel and actually see you in our next episode. Bye. Thank you.